Hey everyone out there in Vinyl Community Land. This is Mark with Vinyl Crush and um, today I have uh, a bunch of new purchases, uh, some first pressings, some uh, special pressings. I have everything from uh, rap and reggae to jazz and uh, classic rock. And I'm going to show you stuff that I bought and stuff that I'm listening to. Um, I have a classical music piece that I'm going to show that I really encourage you to check out if you're into uh, wanting to get into classical music, if you're into to, uh, soundtracks, if you're into prog rock. This is something that would kind of influence those things. It's, it's uh, So check it out. The other thing is, is I'm going to be putting uh, in the description below uh, a playlist of some of the songs that you can click on and go to and listen to some of the music if you would like. So I think without further ado, then I'm going to dive right in. The first record that I want to show you is Straight Outta Compton by N.W.A. Um, this is the first gangster rap album to ever go platinum. Uh, it came out in 1987, I believe. and. This uh, this is Dr. Dre, Ice Cube, and Easy E and Friends. Um, this is an incredibly interesting album. This was hard to find in Portland. It's not an easy album to find. This is a first pressing, so it's kind of an unusual record here in Portland. Um, it's in you know the uh, the cover is a little bit worn. The record label doesn't look so great, but it actually plays really well. I was really lucky to find this. Um, when they created this album they did this thing where they took a bunch of um, like simple and sweet romantic um, uh, songs and they sampled them and they then overlaid them with um, stories that were dark and nasty and just the complete opposite of what the original songs that were sampled were. So you have this sort of beautiful sounding thing happening with this cool uh, beat happening and then these words, songs like Fuck the Police. Um, really dark, really vitriolic. Um, it, it's, it's, but it's incredibly good. I love that sort of dance between those two things that they did. And this is the first time I'd heard something quite like this. And in fact, the song Fuck the Police was, um, they, they got a letter from the FBI warning them or checking in on them about that particular song and about this album. And which, at which point they started calling themselves the most dangerous group in the world, which is Great, great marketing on their part. Um, great album. Really happy to find a first pressing of this. Really feel fortunate. And um, so but I'll, again, I'll have some some I might not have fucked the police, but I have at least one of the songs on here on that uh, playlist. So check that out as well. So another record that has spent a lot of time on my turntable recently is Exodus by Bob Marley. This came out in 1977. Um, this is an original U.S. pressing. So it's the first U.S. pressing on Island labels, the black label with a blue eye in it. This is um, what I, you know, these albums were all, Bob Marley's records were all um, reissued. They were all remastered, but they did it in the Abbey Road studios. And so there's a question about whether they're actually analog. Um, and I've seen some reviews that said that actually the original pressings were even better than the remasters. So I just kept my eye out figuring a lot of people were going to buy the remasters and then sell their original pressings and found one of these. These are actually not easy to find here either. Um, this is an incredible album. Bob Marley recorded this in London. He left Jamaica because of a assassination attempt. He, it just grazed his arm and his chest, but he was shot at. So he left uh, Jamaica and went to London, and he recorded this. Um, this album in particular, I mean, I love Bob Marley, but this album in particular, um, his, his album Legends, which is sort of the greatest hits, um, five of the songs on that are from this album. Um, there's Exodus, there's Jamming, there's um, Waiting in Vain, which is, God, that's such a beautiful song. I love that song. Um, One Love, Three Little Birds. This is such an incredible album. I was really, really happy to get a hold of this. And um, yeah, so again, I'll have some songs on the list in the playlist below. Next, I have a couple of tone poets I want to show you from the uh, Blue Note uh, jazz remasters that Kevin Gray did. 
um, they did such an amazing job on on those albums and um, and I'm not going to go on and on about the tip on jackets and everything because many people who have reviewed these I just want to talk about it because I love these records um, the first one is based on top by Paul Chambers this was his third uh, album with uh, as a headliner he's a bass player he was 22 years old when he put this out it was in 1957 um, it's um, straight ahead jazz it's warm it kind of swings um, because the bass has such a large presence on the album it really the the the, the rhythm section is incredible in fact I'm trying to remember I know Art Taylor is on here um, playing bass, uh, or sorry, playing drums, um, Hank Jones on piano, uh, and Kenny Burrell on guitar. And Kenny Burrell is just such an amazing guitarist, but on this album, he just really fits in the music that is on here. Really, it, 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 he just makes it work. It's incredible. This is a beautiful album. I really, really recommend it. Um, check it out. The next tone poet I want to show you is by Lee Morgan. This is called Cornbread. It came out in 1967. It was his uh, 12th album with Blue Note. He'd been with him for about nine years at this point. Um, this album is soul jazz. It's hard bop. It's um, uh, Hank Mobley. Um, let me look at who else is on here. Uh, Jackie McLean, uh, Herbie Hancock on piano. Um, th this is just an incredible, incredible album. And again, the mix on these is amazing. The separation between all the instruments, the drum and the bass are right there. The, the rhythm, rhythm section has such a great pocket in here. It just really holds the rest of the music. Um, this, is, this is an amazing album. Um, there are, again, this is the tip on jackets that they do with the Tone Poets, um, the original Blue Note labels. This is, this is a beautiful album, and I highly recommend it. So next I'm going to change it up a little bit. This is an album called Stars Are the Light by Moon Duo. This is uh, uh, Ripley, Johnson, and Sanae Yamada, um, and they do a groove-oriented psych. Um, this is such a fun album. It's actually really beautiful. It's a really happy album. You put this on and it's like it just washes over you. It's like beautiful colors washing over you. It's kind of um, very electronic. Um, but it's beautiful. It's just incredibly gorgeous. Uh, the album, the artwork is uh, really nice. It's, it's very groovy, very psych oriented. Uh, and I just wanted to show also the inner sleeve. I love this kind of artwork when they do this kind of stuff and make it look really beautiful like this. And it really fits with the style of the music. This is an incredible album. Really happy that I got this. This next album is one that I was really looking forward to talking about. I love albums that have stories, and the music on here is absolutely amazing. This is also Sprach Zarathustra. This is uh, Strauss, and it's conducted uh, by Reiner with the Chicago Symphony Orchestra. This is one of the analog pro production remasters that they did with the Living Stereo. The, the Living Stereo albums are really quite amazing. Uh, they're the, I'll show you the, this is a remake of the, of the uh, label with the shaded dog on the uh, uh, Vic, RCA Victor labels. Um, those are the ones that the quality is really good. It's usually first pressings. Uh, this, of course, is a remaster. A first pressing of this would cost you over $400 in mint condition. It's just an incredible album. So what's really interesting about this, uh, the, the song, it's actually a tone poem. A tone poem is when somebody takes um, a, a, a book or a poem or a story, anything that's not music, and turns it into a single movement of music that, it, that sort of expresses or tells the story of one of those things. So it's a way of expressing it with music, um, but it's taken from something that's not music, some other art form. It could be a painting, it could be a number of things. Uh, also, Sprach Zarathustra was Thus Spoke Zarathustra, which is a book by Nietzsche. This is the book by Nietzsche where he talks about God being dead. It was kind of a famous book. Um, so uh, 
Strauss wrote this when he was probably 30 years old. What makes this really unique is that um, Reiner actually in 1914 was hired by the same court that Strauss worked for. So he actually knew Strauss. So the guy who conducted this worked with Strauss, knew Strauss, knew how Strauss did his work, what his music sounded like. So I think this is one of the most amazing versions of this song because of that. I love that kind of information to know that here Reiner is really knowing Strauss and what Strauss would want to do with this and, and puts it together for us. Um, the other amazing thing about this album is that most of you have probably heard the opening to this. The opening part of this album is what, uh, written in the notes by Strauss, is called Sunrise. And it's the opening piece that you hear from 2001, the movie. Uh, it, it's incredibly gorgeous. And the recording on here, if you stand in the, in the zone of your speakers and turn it up, when it opens up and moves, it's the, the hair on my body just stands on its end. It's so powerful, so beautiful. This is an amazing, amazing version uh, of this, of this uh, tone poem. Uh, the, the mastering was great. What I also love about this is in so much, so much classical music, um, it, it just sounds like noise. It sounds like a lot. There's so many instruments you can't discern what instruments are playing. It just sounds like this sound, a wall of sound coming at you know, with this on a good stereo. You will hear each instrument. It's freaking beautiful. This is a great recording and I highly re recommend checking it out. And now for something completely different. Da Capo by Love. This uh, is an original pressing on the gold labels. This is a beautiful, beautiful album. I was really happy to find this. And this came out in 1966. This was their second album. This is psych rock, baroque pop, um, rock and roll. It has everything from folk rock, folk rock pop songs to rock and roll on this. Um, it's an incredibly good album. I like this. This is one of my favorites of theirs, actually. And uh, on the second side of this album is a song called Revelation. It's 18 plus minutes, and it was the first time that any band had used, had, had an, a song that took up the whole side of an album. Later on, other bands did it, uh, Inagata De Vida by uh, uh, um, Iron Butterfly, for example. But this was the first. Um, this is a great album. It was wonderful. This is also uh, a Monarch pressing in. Um, Monarch is one of my favorite pressing plants. The, the albums that come from there often sound better than any of the other pressings, whether it's the first pressing or not. Uh, great. Uh, this is a great album. Love it. Really happy to find an original pressing of this. I don't usually, usually do shootouts, but I do have an audiophile pressing of something that I also have a first pressing of, and I'm going to talk about them for just a minute. Um, I just recently got both of them in the last few months. Um, this is The Doors' first album, The Doors. This is a first pressing uh, on the gold labels. This is a Monarch pressing, so it sounds particularly good. Um, I looked for this particular pressing of this album. I think I've bought four copies before I got this one that, that really just, they had pops and ticks, or one of, a couple of them had a, they just never worked out. Um, they were, it's really hard to find for a reasonable price. I didn't want to spend 150 bucks on this. so. I go through bins or go through brands until I find something like this uh, for like 30. And um, this is an amazing album. It has Light My Fire. It has um, uh, the song The End. Beautiful song. Um, I, I love this album. And about the time I found this, uh, I had ordered the Analog, analog Productions um, 45 RPM remaster of the same album. So I got to put them on side by side and listen to them. Um, this is a beautiful, beautiful album. The production, um, the, the uh, gatefold sleeve with the words, um, the labels. It's a 200 gram uh, double album. Um, it's flat as hell. It plays really well. Um, the, the separation on the instrumentation, the clarity, this album is quite amazing. When I played them side by side, the, the, the first pressing sounds great. I really like it. I can't make a complaint about it, but this is clearly even better. Um, listening to the song, The End, you could really hear all of the instruments. You could hear the, the drumstick hit the cymbal. It was just profoundly good. 
this is uh, a great uh, remaster of this album and the first pressing is almost equally as good this next album is from an uh, Australian music project called Dead Can Dance. It was formed by Lisa Gerard and Brendan Perry in 1981. This album called Spirit Chaser came out in the 90s. I can't remember the exact date, actually. Um, this is a reissue on a uh, double album on vinyl. It's, it's, uh, this music is outstanding. Uh, this album... Um, if somebody would have told me, oh, it's kind of tribal, it's kind of this, it's, I don't know if I would have even bothered to listen to it. But um, I want to read, actually, to you a review, because um, I could never have said this better. <clears throat> this is from a music historian. His name is Ian McFarlane, and he described Dead Can Dance's style as uh, constructed soundscapes of mesmerizing grandeur and solemn beauty, African polyrhythms, Gaelic folk, Gregorian chant, Middle Eastern mantras, and art rock. That kind of says it all, doesn't it? Electronic, classical, folk world, uh, modern aboriginal, dark wave. Um, it's very primal, very tribal in nature, but with the, with the polyrhythms and the syncopations, and it's just gorgeous. The voices, the chants, this is an amazing, amazing record. Uh, if you haven't heard it, please check it out. It's, it's outstanding. This is another informal shootout. Um, I have another album that I have a first pressing, and then this one I have actually the uh, Analog Productions UHQR One Step of this album, Jethro Tull Aqualung. Now, I'm not going to do the whole unboxing because so many people on uh, the vinyl community have already done that, but I do want to talk about it because I, I really like this album. Um, I have a first pressing of this, and um, and it, it's... This is Jethro Tull. This came out in 71, I think. This is their most popular... This is their best-selling album. It was also one of the worst recordings they had done. Uh, the albums that came before this really sounded good. You could really hear the separation in all the instruments. The, the drums were in the mix a little more forward. In this album, the drums are kind of buried in the mix. It's really kind of mushy and kind of mixed up. It doesn't sound clear at all. Um, great songs. Uh, in fact, um, on this album, I keep sort of a mental checklist of songs that I like that have um, unique intros. Uh, an example of that would be um, Over the Hills and Far Away by Led Zeppelin, um, uh, Bloody Wall Right by Supertramp. Those are good examples of songs that have these cool little intros that break into a great song. Um, on here is a song called Locomotive Breath great intro really cool bluesy jazzy kind of intro that breaks into this hard rock great song um this is a great album again this is the first pressing it it, it it sounds good the acoustic stuff actually is not too bad uh when it's when there aren't too many instruments playing at once um but then i i wanted to because i love this album so much um i, I wanted to try the the uhqr so i bought it um so this is a double album 200 gram 45 RPM. Um, this is, though, not a remaster. This is the original mix. They just did it on a one-step pressing with more modern equipment to see how it sounded. And, and it does. It sounds better. There's a little more separation. It's less murky sounding. Um, it, it sounds really good. It definitely sounds better than the original pressing. Um, the drums are still a little more buried in the mix than I would like. Um, I really wish that they were able to bring that out. Um, there is a remaster by, I think, Stephen Wilson um, that I've heard, and, and it seems like that brings it out a little more, but there are some other things about that mix that some people don't like. Um, but this, this is a great album. I'm, I really like the One Step. It really does work. It really does sound good. Um, great album. Great songs. This is folk prog rock um, lots of acoustic guitar breaking into electric actually uh, ian anderson um, sings plays flute um, and plays all the acoustic guitars on here which i didn't know when i was younger i thought he had a, his guitar player playing the acoustic guitars but he's quite quite a musician um, fun record great songs and uh, good pressing again flat as hell um, silent beautiful album so 
that's the end. That's all I have today. I want to thank you all for showing up. Uh, I want to thank also especially those of you that have subscribed. Um, thank you so much for supporting the channel. Uh, if you haven't su subscribed, please, uh, if you like what you see, um, give it a click. Click the uh, the um, the bell button so that uh, you'll get notifications when I put videos out and hopefully we'll see you again soon. Thanks for watching.